Lately, a lot of the conversation surrounding Dragon Age the Veilguard has been in regards to its sales performance, which gauging the uh, the performance of this game is very difficult because Bioware and Electronic Arts aren't exactly very forthcoming with this information, which is something that's not necessarily a new thing. This industry is known for stuff like this, especially when games aren't doing all that well. Publishers aren't exactly very forthcoming with giving information to the public about stuff like this. We'll see it at investor calls. They'll maybe say it, you know, underperformed or it's performing just as we as expected, but we don't know exact sales numbers. Now, as we have this article coming from Gaming Bolt, Dragon Age the Veilguard's UK sales, similar to Dragon's Dogma 2, Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth. And the big thing is that these are UK retail charts, and most of the sales nowadays are digitally, so how this relates to, you know, actual numbers, we don't know. But I do think it's rather interesting that it's being compared to massive Star Wars Outlaws, which only sold, I think it was less than 1 million copies in its debut month, which is, uh, that, that's not good. Good. Now it goes on to say here, it's hard to know what EA's expectations were, but it seems fine. It's not earth shattering, but it isn't terrible. Although that all depends on how much was invested in this project. And I would have to assume it's in the hundreds of millions. Uh, Dring, this analyst said he didn't see a huge amount of marketing from EA leading up to its release. They also aren't even doing any DLC. I think all those are notable indicators that they weren't expecting too much from this title. Um, he also revealed that the Veilguard did a little less than Star Wars Outlaws, though it's not far off, and being a little less than Star Wars Outlaws, I don't know how you give an assessment saying that that's it's fine. In my opinion, that would have to be terrible, especially if they spent 10 years working on this game. But anyway, there's been other insiders, supposed insiders, allegations of the game has uh, just reached 1 million copies, and that's much lower than I thought. I thought it would maybe be nearing the uh, 1.5 to 2 million. And then we have other articles just noting how many people are still playing, even more people are playing Baldur's Gate 3 after Dragon Age the Veilguard, which I do kind of find that funny because there's been many opinion pieces saying that Baldur's Gate 3 feels like a true successor to Dragon Age Origins. And if you play Dragon Age the Veilguard, I think the comparisons you have to this game isn't necessarily to the Dragon Age franchise, it's to other things like Marvel's Avengers, Fortnite, and Guardians of the Galaxy, that Square Enix title that bombed a couple of years ago, which was actually pretty decent. But the identity of Dragon Age, feel, it feels very distant than what this franchise started off with. And I think that's why there's such a dissatisfaction, you know, not even not even bringing in the preachy social messaging that's within the game but i thought this was an interesting poll that ign conducted it was pointed out here by pirate nation ign backtracking on veilguard and they had a poll only six percent of the poll takers were happy with the game and it specifically says here, what did you want? 40%, 40.4% said an Inquisition style RPG that directly continued the Sola story. 47.8% uh, said they wanted a throwback to Dragon Age Origins with tactical combat in a darker tone. I think that's the big thing that's missing from the Veilguard. Again, if you've played it, you know that that darker tone is, is missing from this game. And I think that's a big problem. There is an identity crisis happening with this franchise, but I think that's more of an indictment on this modern day Bioware, which is very different than the old school studio that we all fell in love with towards the end of the 2000s and the early 2010s. 3.5% uh, wanted a soft reboot with brand new characters uh, setting and story, reason why that's so low. A uh, full action game in the Dragon Age setting without RPG elements, 0.6%, and then only 6% wanted exactly what the Veilguard is, and that's just, that's not good for a franchise like this, even if it is just an IGN poll. I think that really says a lot about how there's a stark contrast between critics and users with what they even wanted from a Dragon Age game. And I think if you look to a lot of the reviews, a lot of it, they're, they're more than satisfied with this being like an action RPG, but this franchise started out much different. And that's why those who, you know, fell in love with Origins and really didn't like the games that followed or weren't as in love with it are looking to games like Baldur's Gate 3 saying that that's actually the true successor, which again, it... I don't think that the new Bioware learned the lessons that they should have learned from Baldur's Gate 3's success, but maybe it was too little too late, because the fact that more people are going to Baldur's Gate 3 right now, it's just, I find that kind of crazy, but yeah, we did get this from a Bioware art director, he revealed some concept art from the game back in 2014, and I find it really, really interesting. He said, Veilguard, all the way back in 2014, before Dragon Age Inquisition had even shipped, I started sketching out what cool things might come next. We had momentum. So these quick mock-ups explored where 
where some of the unfinished story threads might lead. And I think if you look at some of these images, the immediate thing that you get away from this, and a lot of people are talking about it, it's just that the darker tone is very much here in this concept art. But again, it's been over a decade since this started off, but something was lost in the process. And uh, I genuinely don't understand the direction that Bioware took this franchise and there's just so many questionable problems with this game that I'm sure it's going to be outlined in further reports in the future. But yeah, this concept art looks fantastic. And there's some more even here. He posted a couple of threads or two uh, posts about it. But yeah, here's another one. It just looks so much better, in my opinion, than what we actually got. And I get it. It's just concept art. But the tone is just so much different than what the Veilguard went for, which is a mashup of like Avengers Guardians of the Galaxy. But yeah. And the, some of these scenes still are kind of there. You get this in the beginning of the game with the Veilguard. Here, Solus. Uh, yeah, so I'm not going to go into any real big uh, story spoilers, at least right now, but yeah, th there's just so many questionable things with this game, especially when you compare it to some of the other RPGs that really set the standard, like Baldur's Gate 3. I think Bioware really needed to do a lot more, and they didn't. And I think right now there's just a lot of question marks in regards to what exactly happened with Dragon Age the Veilguard. How did we get this game when you have concept art and it just the darker tone was definitely there at some point. What got lost? And I think there's some very interesting reporting the last couple of years that give clear indication what happened. We have this report coming from Gaming Bolt, what happened to Dragon Age the Veilguard, and they mentioned some of the notable points that I've been talking about for quite some time. By now you know the story of Dragon Age the Veilguard's development before it even came into being, the next title reported it went by the codename Joplin in 2015. And I think a lot of people don't understand that this project started out as Joplin and then it turned into Morrison over the years. And a lot of that has to do with the chaos that we've seen at Bioware. Mass Effect Andromeda, the chaos that surrounded the development of that game hurt this project Joplin that could have been. Uh, it was set in the Teventer Imperium and reportedly focused on a heist. More on the details in regards to what Dragon Age 4 would have been in a second. But, well, the original vision of the game, I should say. As the team put it on hold, to assist with Mass Effect Andromeda and then Anthem. Both titles facing multiple issues and crunch to get them out in time, Joplin fell by the wayside and was allegedly cancelled. After several years, Dragon Age 4 re-emerged in rumors, this time with the codename Morrison and a live service focus. Joplin had allegedly been axed since Electronic Arts didn't want to pursue something that wasn't live service, and this was the big thing at EA about five or so years ago. They were all in on live services, they wanted all their properties to jump in on that. But, fortunately, they learned their lessons after seeing the overwhelming success with uh, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. It encouraged the publisher to invest in single-player games again, resulting in Jedi Survivor, the Dead Space remake, and of course, a single-player-focused Dragon Age sequel. Now, I think the problem was once EA realized this and made the pivot again back to, you know, letting Bioware be what Bioware is, the damage was already done. A Mass Effect Andromeda damaged this studio and Anthem truly crushed it because a lot of developers at Bioware didn't want to make that type of game. So they left the studio, they started new studios, we see that there's a new studio, I think they're working on a game called Exodus that looks like a spiritual successor to Mass Effect with a lot of former Bioware talent. The point is, a lot of the talent that made Bioware who they are, they're long gone. Inquisition lead writer David David Gator was already gone before Anthem Shift, and he had some very not nice words to say about Bioware's leadership and many of the developers at the studio that looked down upon him and his work, which I just find that crazy considering the, the success that he's had in this industry. There seemed to be like the new age of Bioware coming in, and they almost had like disdain for what the studio used to be and how they came to be. But franchise creative director Mike Laidlaw, who also served as lead design and director for the first three titles, left after Joplin's cancellation. And I think that was the clear indication that we were never going to get the true Dragon Age 4 that a lot of us hoped for, because the main man behind this franchise was gone. However, after it shifted focus in 2021, there would be even more high-level departures and layoffs. Last year alone saw 50 employees leaving Bioware, including writer and Kunari creator Mary Kirby. And as it's pointed out here, the live service influence that this Morrison project began with until Electronic Arts gave them the permission to make the Bioware game that we all expect out of Bioware, it, it, that influence is still there. The layout of the lighthouse and veil guard, which vaguely resembles a social hub right down to each companion so carefully segregated and split apart. The mission interface, when fast traveling to the crossroads, reminding me of a mobile RPG when selecting your party composition, the overtly linear main missions. All of this indicates that the live service beginnings of Morrison is still very much there in the DNA of veil guard, and I feel like that's kind of problematic to the actual game that we got. But more specifically, with Joplin, the original Dragon Age for vision.
Legend, Jason Schreier actually a number of years ago outlined what this project was actually going to be. And again, it's very different than what we actually got with the Veilguard. As Game Rant notes, even Summit Bioware called the next Dragon Age, which is the Veilguard game we actually got, Anthem with Dragons. And you know, Anthem and Dragons kind of it's actually not too far off than what we got with the Veilguard. However, it appears that was not always the case. There was another Dragon Age 4 codename Project Joplin. This version of Dragon Age 4 would be internally cancelled by Bioware upon Casey Hudson's return to stay the flames of Anthem which led to the creation of Morrison, a much smaller team for Dragon Age 4 that removed Mike Laidlaw, creative director of Dragon Age, from the project and placed him on Anthem and obviously, like a lot of developers at Bioware, they said they didn't want to work on that and they also looked at other lot of the chaos that was happening at Bioware, and they ultimately left the studio to go do other things. But unlike Anthem, which did not have a clear vision, many loved Laidlaw's ideas for Dragon Age 4, and it was benefiting from the tools and production pipeline set forth after Inquisition, but it was squandered, unfortunately due to a lot of the chaos that was happening at Bioware over the last number of years. But in Joplin, players would have been spies in the Teventer Imperium, and the game's goal was to put emphasis on choice and consequence and have smaller areas and fewer fetch quests than Inquisition did. One developer at Bioware commented on the Joplin idea of repeat play for Dragon Age 4, which would have seen in-game areas change over time with missions that had multiple branches, which would even allow for non-standard game overs if too many bad decisions were made. Bad decisions, evil decisions. Another thing that's missing from Dragon Age, uh, the Veil Guard. And it seems like the original Dragon Age 4 pitch very much had that to the DNA of the game, which oh, it's just so, so disappointing. But it does continue. Joplin would have also focused on heist as spies, presumably to circumvent the plans of Solas. While speaking to Kotaku, developers also mentioned systemic narrative mechanics that would have allowed Dragon Age 4 players to persuade, extort, or somehow abuse guards. Again, some of that evil villainy that's missing from Veilguard. It would have been very much there in that Joplin Dragon Age 4 vision, the original one. One former Bioware developer who worked on this project even stated, we were working towards something very cool, hugely reactive game, smaller in scope than Dragon Age Inquisition, but much larger in player choice. The, the one thing that everybody seems to be wanting from RPGs these days, the old standard. Uh, they would have had player choice, followers, reactivity, and depth. I'm sad that game will never get made, and I'm very sad after what we got with the Veilguard, which has disappointed a lot of longtime fans of this franchise. So yeah, that was the original vision for Dragon Age 4, which is very different than what we actually got. And, and if you looked at some of the teasers that we got years ago, six years ago, we got the first teaser for this new Dragon Age game, and again, it's just, it's very different. The, the darker tone is very much there. It's just so crazy how this project changed. Here's the teaser from 2018 that was shown at the Game Awards. And again, this one specifically doesn't show too much, but... Yeah, I'll speed it up a little. So... You found me at last. I suspect you have questions. Dreadwolf Rises. And then even in 2020, we got actually a lot more concept art and everything. And again, the project just looks so much different. And I love how in the comment section you can see people looking back on this saying, oh, if you only knew the shit show that is number four, what happened? This age horribly, Jesus Christ, what went wrong? And yeah, this is the teaser we got in 2020 for this game. And even then it seems very different than what we got now. We're still in early production but we thought it was time to give you the very first look at how Bioware's passionate team of developers are crafting this very special game. And again, it's worth mentioning, Casey Hudson, he, he ain't here anymore, he left. I will speed up past some of this stuff. I did Bioware for a really long time. So and there's Mark Dara, he ain't there either anymore. I think he served in like a, a consultant role of sorts. He no longer was in charge though. He was not an executive producer on this. So I've got to see it grow up and turn from a, from a company of 35 people to a company of more than 300 people. Yeah, and almost all those 300 individuals left over the last number of years that were responsible for the games that we actually fell in love with, with Bioware. There's amazing people in the industry. There's amazing stories to be told with other people. I love that character so much. <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> We're very experimental here at Bioware. So we're always coming up with new stuff. Uh <laughs> we're always trying to improve, innovate, and bring new characters to life for our players and fans to enjoy. Yeah, and here's some of the early concept that I was talking about. The world
world of Dragon Age really has got it all. It's got frontier stories, it's got mystery, it's got hard-boiled detail. I will say I love how the, if you look at the proportion of the heads, they look normal in the concept art, which in the game they do not. And uh, yeah, they also look very different. Active stories. And of course, it's all wrapped up in kind of a fantasy setting. You really feel like you're the hero in the Dragon Age world and you're saving people. Dragon Age to me is a wonderful world to play in. I am really excited about the I mean, again, I, I like a lot of this concept art, but again, what they were going for back then just seems very different than what we got now. Future of Dragon Age. This is an original world, original flora, original wildlife, original architecture. That makes it fun to explore and discover. In the next Dragon Age, we get an opportunity to, to see new things, new places, and interact with people who lived and grew up in these spaces as well. For the game we're working on now, we want to tell a story, what happens when you don't have power? What happens when the people in charge aren't willing to address the issues? The things that you can expect in the next installment are going to be stories that focus on the people around you and the friends and family you make. Yeah, again, the narratively what they were saying back then, they were already red flags. And even now when I look back, I'm just like, Jesus, all indication indicated that the direction that they're going with the story wise, I was just, I was not a fan back then. And then even after playing it now, I really don't like what they did with Morrison. And I would have really loved to see what, you know, Mike Laidlaw and the original Dragon Age team, what they were cooking up with Joplin, because it sounds a lot more interesting than the Velgard. Something that we'll be able to look forward to in Dragon Age is a really close relationship with game characters who really become real for you. We want characters to either be loved or hated. One of the best examples of that is Solus. Half the community wants to kill him, half the people want to marry him, and another part want to do both. They call me the Dread Wolf. What would they call you? I know, again, another thing, the hated part, the evil part, I just, there's just not enough of that in this new Dragon Age. When this is over. Bioware and EA has been one of the forerunners in using motion magic technology, and that makes it way more realistic when you're looking at the characters and the way they walk and move and interact in the world. Players want that suspension of disbelief that this wonderful collection of digital pixels is actually a living, breathing soul. No, no, no. I guess one thing I also wonder is how much of the, like the God of War inspiration was there in like 2020, 2018 with this game, because I, it's, I just find it hard to believe that it really began that way with Morrison. With Joplin, obviously, I think it would have gone a completely different direction in terms of its gameplay. And yes, it would have been a more proper sequel to Inquisition. And I think that's a chief complaint that a lot of people have about Dragon Age the Veilguard. The choices, the, the lore, it just feels disconnected. No, it's okay. That's the good kind of rumble. I actually design bosses. I help with the creature design team as well. So I do all of like the- Yeah, and the, the, like I said, we've, some of that concept art even before then, they got rid of spiders, I think completely. I don't know why, but um, yeah, let's see if I can pull this back enough. I actually design bosses. I help with the creature design team as well. Yeah, like we could see they were still going with that Fortnite. I just, I, I don't care for what they did with some of these character designs, in my opinion. Even back then, the red flags were there. So I do all of like the big threats that you have to go up against. Nobody dies on my watch. For the Wardens! Choice is a big part of what Dragon Age is as a franchise. The decisions you make can affect change in the world. Decision making can mean that a party member lives or a party member dies. I mean, there's some of that decision making in Veilguard, but nowhere near the extent that we've seen in other RPGs. And I think that's the complaint that a lot of people have. They say, again, I understand people are going to be in the comment section saying, why do you keep comparing this to Baldur's Gate 3? But I mean, there's just so many different aspects of Baldur's Gate 3, the freedom, the choice that should be there in a new modern Bioware experience or even Bethesda. This is a complaint that I've had with them. These are some of the original architects of the modern RPG and they have not evolved enough. And we've seen other developers in this industry rise up like Larian. And uh, yes, th this is definitely a complaint that's valid and should be thrown at Bioware because they should be doing more in terms of choice and consequence in these RPGs. And being the fact that you can't even really be evil in a Dragon Age game is just fucking insane to me. And it means owning your outcome and reactivity to 
the choices that you do make. I mean, there is, and I, there is some of that within this game. It's not like there's none of it. It's just not to the extent that I think I personally wanted from a new Dragon Age game, especially being that this comes uh, about a year or so after Baldur's Gate 3. I just love the possibilities that Dragon Age offers us, and I'm excited to explore a lot more of them. To me, that potential is what gets you up in the morning. It's a fantastic opportunity every time. Yeah, again, it's just some of this concept art, just what it looks like here to the actual, what we actually got, it's just so different. Yeah, that was Dragon Age 4. That was the original, well, that was the original Morrison that ended up being Veilguard. And then before that, we had Joplin, which was being led by Mike Laidlaw, which we never got. And that has largely to do with a lot of the chaos that happened at Bioware in terms of Anthem, in terms of Mass Effect Andromeda, in terms of Electronic Arts wanting live services, and then obviously changing their mind years later. But yeah, it's just very interesting looking back to a lot of the exposés, the leaks, and even some of the stuff that we got revealed this week of what Dragon Age 4 was originally envisioned to be. And I kind of feel sad that we'll never get to see that. And it seems like some Bioware developers feel the same way. Anyway, what do you make of Dragon Age the Veilguard? Have you played it? Have you not? What do you make of the original vision of Dragon Age 4 Joplin, the Joplin Project? Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below, but thank you for watching. Make sure to leave a like if you did enjoy this video, or if you found any informative value, consider subscribing for more videos like this, and I'll see you later.